It was more than 600 years ago when groups of Chinese sailors, traders and farmers migrated to Indonesia. Unknown to these early settlers, they would produce a hybrid culture that is rich, exciting and still thriving today. And while Indonesia has that older Chinese influence, it continues to welcome newer ones in more recent migrations. This is the story of the exciting assimilations produced between the cultures of the Chinese and their adopted homeland. Tangara, a pivotal fortress of the Dutch colonizers in Indonesia. The Dutch arrived near the end of the 16th century and established Tangerang as the western frontier of Batavia, Jakarta today. But even before the Dutch came, the Chinese were already here. Iwan knows Tangerang well, the town and its Chinese roots. Jim, apa kabar? Sibuk, Jim. He's a local journalist who's been researching about Tangerang's heritage throughout his career. He's also an eager guide. And he's keen to show us a living piece of Tangerang's Chinese heritage. This house is one of a handful still around that were built during the time of the early Chinese settlers. It has all the trappings of the houses in the immigrants' ancestral homelands. And it's still occupied today by descendants of its original owners. There's photographs of the children of the family. In these cases, six children overall. And there's a saying uh, in a local dialect that banyak anak, banyak rejeki. Because it, uh, uh, if you beget a lot of offspring, means you can cultivate your land and uh, generate prosperity. The first Chinese immigrants arrived in Tangerang in the 15th century. They took up jobs as farmers, laborers, workers, and traders, then became the city's earliest Chinese settlers. More would arrive over the centuries, drawn by the booming economic prospects of the region. Some among the early settlers chose local women as wives. These collective unions created a hybrid culture known as Peranakan. Their offspring inherited the language and lifestyle of their mothers, but the customs and beliefs of their fathers, many of which are still widely practiced today. Religion, for one. This is Buntek Bio, the oldest of three temples in town. Established in 1684, the temple has become a repository of stories of the community's history. <laughs> Terdapat di Teluk Naga satu rombongan perahu di bawah pimpinan Cencilung atau Halung. Dalam rombongan ini ada sembilan orang gadis. Nah, disunting oleh Presiden Anggalarang. Di sana di Teluk Naga itu ada penguasa namanya Sanghya Anggalarang dari Kerajaan Pajajaran. Yang disunting oleh Presiden Anggalarang itu yang kompensasi bidang tanah. Laki-laki Tiongho menikah dengan penduduk setempat. Hasil perkawinan laki-laki Tiongho dengan penduduk setempat menuju namanya pelanakan Tiongho. The marriage ceremony might have looked a little like this. Today is an important day for Tangerang's Peranakan community. Two of its members are tying the knot. Because for me, this is, uh, my mom said, if you do the Chiu Tao, we call it Chiu Tao, this is only once in a lifetime. Currently, the teenagers recently uh, don't want to do this one because it's very complicated, you know, all the makeup. The bride's headdress is fashioned after the Phoenix coronet, which features in traditional Chinese wedding rites. 
if you see the we call it enchim this uh, not all the makeup artists can do this one the flower the, the, because this one is you have to put the flower in order i don't know what is the reason <laughs> yeah so i said uh, okay lah <laughs> It's the most senior members of the clan who are called upon to supervise the formalities. <laughs> the rituals handed down over the generations are based on old customs from the old country. The couple receive a bunch of blessings. This one, involving 12 dishes, each with different tastes, symbolizes the bitter and sweet in a union. The family is a meticulous lot. Sticklers for observing rituals to the letter. Oh, karena adat begini, ini yang sah disahin sama Yentikong yang di atas Tuhan Allah yang Maha Esa. Ini apa adat pernikahan begini? yang disahkan oleh Tuhan Allah yang Maha Kuasa yang di atas. Iya, karena ini saya pertama pakai adat ini ya, turun ke anak saya supaya adat keturunan ini dari apa? nenek moyang ya. Iya, nenek moyang saya dulu sampai sekarang supaya adat generasi terus menerus ya supaya budayanya enggak hilang. Today's a special day for the Peranakan community in Tangara. Weddings are a big deal in this town, one of the first Chinese settlements in Indonesia. The happy couple and everyone else in the extended family go through the motions. While Udaya gets busy making sure everything's in its place. Yeah, habis ini jalannya semua ya. Ya, tinggal dia di sini. Tinggal ini, ini sekarang mau sepasang kedua pasang. Iya. Udaya doesn't just own this house, which happens to be the most popular venue for Pranakan weddings. He's also a bit of an authority on the wedding customs, all of which are inherited from age-old Chinese rituals. This we call it the 12 bowls, 12 12 mangkuk, so represent the 12 months of the year. And all the all the meats all there, okay, consisting of 12 kinds, and that resembling also the, the balance of yin and yang. Six contain feiji and six contain meat. And this time today, the parents will fit, you know, the groom, and, and also the next will be the, the bride, as to symbolize this is the last day that the parents fit you. The ceremonies conclude at the temple, an opportune moment for Udaya to steal away. He wants to show us another property of his, one that he's especially proud of. This is Benteng Heritage Museum. It's a 17th century Chinese-styled house dedicated to promoting understanding of the community's heritage. My grandparents actually came from China and I grew up on the street. And uh, yeah, I moved somewhere else. But after 30 over years, I come back and I bought this building and make it into a museum. Yeah, this limestone, Kapur. Yeah. This museum has been acting as a hub, especially for those Indonesian Chinese who have long detached with their ancestors. And they come here, they try to search. Amazingly, I discovered the couple, they migrated to Holland when they were children. And then they, they only knew that their grandparents have a certain particular surname. The grandparents came from a bit outside Tangerang. So when they came down here, they told me the story. I tried to, 
to link with all my networks. In two weeks' time, he got the answer where the ancestry was. Mereka seperti di blog blog itu gimana? Nah, ada tiga orang. Waktu ceritanya itu zaman I don't care whether it's cheap or whether it's expensive because I want every single thing can talk. Okay, this tablet. This tablet is very historical for us. It's written that 81 Chinese in 1882, which was during the Qing Dynasty, 1882, they collected a certain amount of money to build the roads, the uh, landing port near the river. They saved money under the command of the Buntekbyo Temple. So they collected money and they built the infrastructure for the city. So I can say that China Benteng or the Chinese in Tangerang also built the city. Yeah, and this is the evidence, very crystal clear. Like Udaya, Aji is another Pranakan eager to promote more understanding about the community. His Chinese roots trace back to 1760, when his ancestors arrived in Samara, another early Chinese settlement that is also home to the Pranakans. Aji is now a keen blogger on all things Pranaka, especially the cuisine. He's planned to give us a little guide into the unique hybrid cuisine that is Pranakan Indonesian. And Tangerang's old market is just the place to start. We call it here bajang. The local bajang taste has been uh, adjusted and, and it has been uh, suited with the local taste. It's more sweet and brownish, which originally in China has more savory and have more salty taste. And that's the biggest difference between local one. While old Chinese culinary traditions continue to be preserved in Tangerang, newer immigrants have also spiced up the country's food scene. Over at another edge of Indonesia, at a spot of paradise called Bali, the woks are already fired up in one of the busiest Chinese kitchens on the island. Mok is in charge here. He moved from Hong Kong nine months ago to become the head chef of a famous Chinese restaurant. Now he's mentor to the locals here. In Bali, I've already done a in Singapore. I've been to Guangzhou. I've been to work for my work for a long time. I've been to work for my work. I've been to work for my work. I've been to work for my work. Mock shifts are typically hectic. So, during his days off, he likes nothing better than to just chill out. And when he wants company, the first friends he calls are the guys from work. I work with Sipu Mok. He's happy, he's professional. I hope I can work a lot longer with Sipu Mok, a lot longer. The differences in language haven't stopped Mok from developing a friendship with the locals in his team. That's in part thanks to his dim sum chef, Fai. Bali, paradise on earth for many a vacationer seeking sun, sand, and fun. 
But that's not all on offer in Indonesia's top holiday spot. There's also the cuisine, including some fairly recent additions to the very cosmopolitan dining scene. It's a Saturday morning at the Rimba Hotel, Jimbaran. The kitchen in Ayat restaurant is in full swing, and the chefs are already preparing the mise en place. The team is held by Mok, who comes from Hong Kong. Mock supervision is required for some of the restaurant's signature dishes. Among them, the classic Indonesian noodle soup, mie soto, which has received a bit of a Cantonese treatment thanks to Mok. It's a dish he's perfected with the help of his Indonesian colleagues. When it comes to working relationships between the Chinese and the Balinese, this other chef is the poster boy for successful cultural assimilations. Mr. Tam Chi Fai, otherwise known as Lao Da or Big Brother in Chinese, is one of the most loved and respected Chinese chefs on the island. He arrived in 1990 and found work as a commercial diver. Just like the early Chinese immigrants before him, Lao Da too came here in search of greater fortunes. 沒有考慮過一大一丟是二十七年,只是想來這裡做做早吃,早前,好像一年回去一次,就是來來去去這樣休息的時候放假我們回香港。Eight years into the job, he decided to open a restaurant business, and it quickly became a runaway hit. Over the years, he opened a third and then a fourth branch. Not only that, in all that time, Lao Da found love and decided to call Indonesia home. He and his Indonesian wife have a son, Simon, who has also been co-opted into the family business. Lao Da has grown very accustomed to living and working in Bali. He even speaks the local language. Lauta is still very much hands-on when it comes to the cooking. These days, Simon runs the business, and he's always eager to show anyone how the Lao Da story all began. Actually, it started from only one building. It's right in the center of the, these three buildings right now. This one, in the beginning, it was only in here, only four tables. And then after that, uh, many, 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 many uh, customers uh, come to, to our name, and and then we started to make a big, bigger. Let's go inside. The Chinese uh, tourists, everybody wants to have a picture with my father because my father served really well, uh, the, the Chinese tourists. While Simon and his team cook up a storm in Bali, things are just about to get heated in Tangara. Food blogger Aji has a special appointment with Udaya, owner and manager of Tangarang's Benteng Heritage Museum. The two Pranakan foodies have come together to exchange some of their family recipes. This one is a very special fish. Let me show you. We call this samge. Pranakan food, in fact, best symbolizes the union between the two cultures. 
The cuisine has its roots in common Chinese dishes, but over the centuries, indigenous spices and cooking techniques have been thrown into the mix. The skin, fat, and yeah. meat. But it's the funny thing is the in Mandarin it's a wu huaro, it's a five flower. Five flowers of the meat actually mm -hmm. is. A, but sometimes it's our term. Yeah, you know, here. Chinese always give good names for anything. <laughs> Even they don't say chicken fillet. They call it phoenix cloves. Okay, that's the Chinese. Okay, so the the, the pork we put it inside. The Chinese immigrants at that time also uh, get married with the local, so they experiment. So we still can see the root of the trace of the, from the China or from Indonesia, but it's purely new bread of the food, as we call it fusion food. While Aji and Udaya preserve the culinary heritage of their community, in Bali, it's time for another pair of cooks to meet. As it turns out, Mok and Lao Da are actually close friends. The entire Tam clan is present, including members of Lao Da's wife's extended family. But for Mok and Lao Da, there's lots to catch up on. The Chinese will never feel like strangers in Bali. Thanks to the hospitality of Mok, Lao Da, and many more Chinese chefs who brought a taste of their homeland along with them. And for Tangarang's Peranakan community, their Chinese roots live on in their inherited customs, which are preserved perhaps even more passionately than they are back in their ancestral homeland. While they are indeed two separate communities, both of them have managed to bridge the links between the cultures of China and Indonesia. And both of their works are a feast for the senses, for everyone to savor. They will be better.